So we're going to keep talking about maximum and minimum values, but going to be a lot more detail today on the different types and when they occur. Now, we just were talking about uh, relative or local max and mins on the quiz we just wrote, but as of today, you're going to kind of be more responsible for all the types of max and mins. Okay. Now. There is the first type that we're going to talk about that not always occurs, but sometimes occurs, and that's when you have absolute max slash mins. They are the highest and lowest points on the curve. Okay, they, uh, they occur at turning points. Right, that's your CVs, or at endpoints. So we haven't been dealing with endpoints much, um, and you're going to see probably today is the most time you're going to deal with endpoints because that is when you're going to have most often your absolute max and mins, but not always. It could be, uh, you know, just a ruse to to draw you that way, but. If we look at these two curves here, let's just kind of label everything. Well, first of all, this is an actual end point. Okay? It's ending there. Do you see it is the highest point on that graph? So this would be an absolute max. Okay, now if we had to label the absolute min, we would call this right here the absolute min. And I'm going to talk about this more later. It's actually also a local min. Just by definition, it's a local min because within that area, it is the smallest value as well as absolute means through the entire graph, it is the lowest value. And this, yep. No, this would be an absolute min, right? Sometimes they do occur. Um, something like this would not have an absolute min or a max, right? No. You can only have one absolute min. This I'm actually going to write. This is nothing. Okay. Yeah, because the definition of an absolute min is the most minimum point on the graph. Fits. The definition, as we'll see, for a local min is it is a point rel in a relative area where it is the most minimum. Okay. So according to this, this everything here is higher, everything here is higher. So in the local area, it is also. But more concerned, obviously, that you're seeing it's an absolute min. Okay. Now, this next graph beside, what would be the absolute max? No. So this would actually have no absolute max. Okay, good point. You'd say, well, right before that, but no, the graph ends there with an unknown, and theoretically that unknown should be the absolute max, right? But we don't know it, so it's not going to be the absolute max. And how about this, absolute min? So that's no absolute min. Okay, now there are local maxes and mins, but that's not really part of this activity. They just want to find any absolutes. Okay, so there's our locals, but okay. Now we'll talk about local. So they're called local or relative max min. Okay, and they occur at critical values when x equals c. So when f prime equals zero, that's relative. OK, 
okay, or when it's undefined, just like we did yesterday. So if it is a cusp or corner, it could be a local. Because this is going for, oh, this one? Because we don't actually know it. So how could this be the maximum point that doesn't exist? So you're wondering why it's not here? Because we actually don't even know that point. Okay, like what, what if this was, uh, let's just say this was uh, like 5 comma 4. What is this point then right there? Well, that's just five four, right? So that that means this could be three point nine 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 nine. We don't know, right? Whereas this, if this was five comma four, four is the max. Right? You just know it, okay? So just know that if it's not an endpoint, it can't be a max, okay? If there's no endpoint here, can't be a min. Okay, so local will occur at when slope equals zero or it's undefined. Okay, so here's some more local max or mins must have a left and hand, uh, left hand and right hand side. They cannot be endpoints. Okay, just again rules, right? Local max and mins must have a change in slope. They must go from increase to decrease or decrease to increase for them to be max or mins. Okay, so just on this one alone, okay, this point right here, is it anything? It's not an absolute max because there's more maximum than it. Okay, is it a relative max though? Why not? There's no increase and decrease, just increase stop. Okay? How about here? Yeah. Absolute min and by definition a local min or relative min. Yep. Okay, so this would be an absolute min and a local min. Okay, this point here, anything? Local max. Right here, local min. And this, nothing, okay? Stuff's a little easier than the last unit, eh? It's a nice break. Okay, let's go to this next one. Is this anything? Yeah, absolute min. Okay, moving right along. This would be a slope of zero. This would be a. So we got an absolute and local max. Right here, local min. And here, nothing. Tough stuff, eh? It's kind of one of those things that if, you, uh, if you're here, it's very simple, but has those little weird things in it, right? Making sure that because this, some people would call this a local max if they weren't uh, knowledgeable about the fact that it's got to be both. Okay, so how do you find absolute max mins on an interval? So find critical values. So when does f prime of c equal zero? Or when does f prime of c equals undefined? And when you do these now, you want to state the y values. They're actually the important values because they tell you how high or how low, right? That's what y does. OK, 
Okay, uh, find the y values at the endpoints. Okay, that's uh, that's important because maybe they are. If there are endpoints, maybe they're the actual max and min, the absolute. Now, the largest y value is called the absolute max. And the smallest y value would be your absolute min. OK, now um, just I want to put this one example down because I want people to be quite aware of it that if you had something like this, So there would be no local max or mins on this one. Okay, that's always going to be the kind of quirk. When it goes from positive to positive, obviously it didn't change signs, so how can it be by definition? Local, because local has to change from either max to min or min to max, or sorry, from increase to decrease or decrease to increase. Okay, identify all the locations. Okay, so you can see an obvious multiple choice question come out of these, or maybe even a labeling question. Is A anything? It's an absolute max. B, local min. C, local max. Can't have two absolute maxes. Okay. D, so we got absolute and local min. And E, nothing. Okay, obviously the best distractor on a test would for E, people would say, would be a local max. Okay, A, nothing. B, local max. C, local min, D, so absolute and local max, and E, nah, this is lower, right? So whatever this is, it is lower, so this is going to be nothing. Okay, everybody's favorite. These are all the, the piecewise ones, right? Okay, so when x is less than negative 2, it's negative 2x minus 7. Okay, so here is negative 2. Jeez, oh, I don't like this. Let's put a couple more ticks in here. Okay, so we'll call this negative 2, and it's got to go through, because it's negative uh, 2x minus 7, so it's got to go through 1, 2, 6, 7, negative 7, and it's going to go negative 2, so that's down 2 over 1. Okay, so it's where is it going through? It's going through about 3.5. So this is the line uh, that negative 2x minus 7 represents. But it's only going to do that up to negative 2, right? So up to this point right here. So this part of the graph doesn't exist for that interval. And It says on the interval, negative 8, negative 4. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's going to keep going till right there. OK, because we're doing it on this interval. OK, then. It's x cubed plus 5, 
between negative 2 and 1. Okay, now if we put 0 in there, we get 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we know it's going to go through there. So maybe I'll, I'm going to keep this all color coded here. This was my blue. Okay, maybe this one I'll do black. So x cubed minus 5 goes, and then it goes all the way to 1. 1 cubed plus 5 is 6. So it's maxing about there. Negative 1 will give me 4. It's going to be about there. So it's doing something sort of like this. Okay, and then for x is greater than 1, it is 2 over x plus 4. So 2 over 1 plus 4, it does share that value. Good. And 2 over 2 plus 4, it's 1 plus 4, it's 5. So it's coming about there. And 2 over 4 plus 4 gives me about 2. No, no, 1 half plus 4. That gives me 4 and a half. What am I thinking? Okay, so it's kind of doing, and it's going all the way to, okay, so this is 4. I'm kind of doing something like this to there. Okay, and we're stopping there because of the interval. Does that look right? Okay. Did I graph it right? Yeah? Um, we got to check these points. Like at negative 2, so I checked this point, right? And it existed, and this existed for both too, because if I put uh, 2 times, because this is supposed to be 2 times negative 2 is negative or that'd be 4 plus negative 3. So I had negative 3 there. And I should get negative 3 when I put in here. Yeah, that's negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. So it, this one picks up where the other one left off. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so... Let's talk about points here. What point is this? It's not an arrow because of this. They gave me an actual domain to stay in. Okay, what point is this? Yeah, it's absolute max, but what's the actual coordinates? So this is negative 8, uh, 9. Okay, down here, what would this be? So that's negative 3, negative 2. I'm sorry, negative 2, negative 3. Negative 2, negative 3, and then this here would be 1, 6. And this here would be 4, 4, point, four and a half, right? 4, comma, 4 and 1 half. Okay, so it says determine all the local and absolute. So we've got an absolute max at negative 8, 9. Okay, we would have an absolute and local min at negative 2, negative 3. Okay, and what's going on at 1, 6? Local max at 1, 6. And what's going on at 4, 4.5? Four Nothing. Okay.
Okay, state the absolute max mins for each. Okay, so all we want is the absolute max mins. Now, do you see it's given over an interval? So there is a possibility that those could be the max mins, or where's other places that could have absolute max mins between them, but specifically? Yeah, we don't, we don't want local. But how else do I find absolute max mins? Because hmm? critical values. How do I find critical values? Derivative. So f prime of x equals, I should be good at this now. What's the derivative? OK, those are the nice ones. OK, so what can I factor out? 3, leave me with x squared minus 1. So cv is plus or minus 1. Now, there are, you can draw the graph. You can do your uh, number line. But with this one, there's only four points to check. So you put in each endpoint and each critical value and look for, at all the y's. OK? So now I did both. So I got negative 3, negative 1, 1, 5. Now I don't have to test on the left side of negative 3. Why? Because that's not in my interval. Okay? So what's going on from negative? So if I pick negative 2 here, I would get positive, right? This one's really easy just to plug in. This one, I will put in 0. I will get a negative. And if I plug in, say, 2, positive. OK, so I am going increasing, decreasing, increasing. So negative 3. I'm not thinking is going to be a local max or an absolute max. Could be what kind of min? Absolute. Can't be a local min because a local min has to have increase and decrease. So let's try. So we want to take negative 3 and put it into the original. So f of negative 3 equals it's ne negative 16. Okay, so until I find them all, I don't really know what it is at this point. Let's keep going left. Negative 1 is 4. F of 1, if you put that in, you get 0. And F of 5 gives me 112. Okay, so there's there's actually three three ways to kind of look at this, or and you can just actually roughly, okay. So if negative three, I would have negative three, negative sixteen. Okay, then at negative one, I would have negative one four. So we look way up here. Okay, then I have 1, 0 is right on the graph. And then 5 is 112. So who knows? It's way up there somewhere, right? Okay, so it says from negative 3 to negative 1, I have increase. Negative 1 to 1, I'm having like a decrease. 
and then 1 to 5 back to increase. So again, if you're a visual learner, you might want to spend time to just make this. Some people, they look at the, the points, negative 3 to negative 16. Okay, I can see that's got to be absolute min. Okay, and 512 would be absolute max. I find that when you draw the graph, it's pretty obvious, okay? But sometimes just looking at the numbers, it's not as clear because even between, uh, sometimes it's hard to even know, oh, is this a max? What was this again? Is this a max? Was this a min? So you just draw it quick. Now, I don't know for sure where the x-intercept is. That's not important at this point. It's just finding max and mins. Later, we'll need to know if exactly where they, you know, x-intercepts are the y-intercepts maybe it does a you know change here of second derivative we don't know that for sure but just drawing it roughly helps me find out just max and mins okay okay let's do this one here nice fast derivative f prime of x this one's in the interval negative five five so f prime of x would be minus 36. Okay, f prime x. Let's take out a 6. We move x squared minus x minus 6. Okay, two things that add to give me negative 1 and multiply to give me negative 6. We need negative 3 and 2, right? x minus 3, x plus 2. See, these are. 3 and negative 2. Okay, so we go in our number line. We got negative 5, remember, and 5 are my endpoints. So I don't have to check outside of them. And then I've got like negative 2s over here, and then I got 3 over here. Now, again, maybe you're the type of person, hey, I'll just plug those values in. I can visualize it without that without having to do all this, but you know, usually you're going to get one of these on a test. It doesn't take too long to actually just do your increases and decreases. Okay, so if you put in like negative 3, okay, that would give me a negative and a negative. So that's positive. Okay, if I put in, say, 0, be a negative and a positive. Gives me a negative. If I put in, say, 4, 4 minus 3 is positive, 4 plus 2 is positive, we got a positive. So we're going increase, decrease, increase. Okay, so here we could have an absolute max or just a local max, right? So these two points are competing right now for absolute max. Does that make sense? So let's just try and we'll try f of negative 2. You put negative 2 in, you get 106. If I put f of 5 in there, remember I'm putting into the original equation, not into the derivative. f of 5 gives me 57. So negative 2 is the absolute max. Okay, and at this point, either negative 5 or 3 would be competing for absolute max or absolute min. So let's try negative 5. So f of negative 5 gives me negative 83. And f of 3 gives me negative 19. So this would be absolute min. Okay, and just on this one, if you were to graph it, this would be 
negative 5, negative 83. And then we've got negative 2, 106. And we've got like 3, negative 19. And then 5, I get 57. Okay, so it is increasing from here to here. Then it's decreasing. And then it's increasing. It's stopping at these two points. Now you'll see in the book, they just put the numbers in and they'll look for the greatest y value or the greatest or least y value, right? But because it's notes, I want you to be able to see it visually as well to go, okay, that makes sense with the diagrams we've been doing. Okay. Nice easy one, right? So over the interval negative 1 and 2, y equals x squared plus 1. So y prime would be 2x. So cv equals 0. OK, so this one here, I mean, if you know what an x squared graph looks like, it's a parabola going up, right? So I'm just going to find out what f of negative 1 is. And that would give me 2 f of 0 would give me 1, and f of 2 would be 5. Okay, so if you can picture this graph, okay, so we are negative 1, so say that's negative 1, and this is 2, or about here. The next one is 0, 1 be about there, and the next one is 2, Let's see, 5 would be about there, okay, so we've got this graph here. Okay, so what is this point here? Anything? No. This one? Okay. And local could be too, right? Okay, and 2, 5 would be absolute max. Okay, so we've done enough practice with them. Let's see if just given information, if we could find absolute and local max mins. Okay, it says roughly sketch the function y equals f of x. I have no idea what it is using these descriptions. There is an endpoint at f of negative 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I got negative 7. Four. One, two, three, four. So there's an endpoint at seven, four. Negative seven, four. Okay, so far so good. Okay, now f prime at negative three. So here's negative three. Is undefined. So what should what's happening there? could be a cusp a corner. The reason that I would say it's a cusp corner because it is a local min at x equals 3. So you want to read these two together. So it's a local min at x equals th negative 3. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, how do we know what's here, 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 whatever, but I'm just going to draw it underneath. Because I, for some reason, always think mins should be low. Okay? That's just local. It says there's no absolute min. 
but I'm expecting a corner there or a cusp, okay? Not an asymptote or else I wouldn't have been able to find a local min. F prime of 5 equals 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it's an absolute max. So what do I know that the smallest y value could be? Four point zero 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 one. So I'm just going to put it up here, about there, because it's got to be above negative seven four. So this is an absolute max. This is a local min. And then there is no absolute min. So this is probably going down, right? Because there's no other place I can do that to show it's going forever, right? Every other place in the graph. So there's an endpoint. It does not say there's an endpoint the other. So it's probably looking something like this. Now you can see where that local min could be many places. Yep. Oops, crap. I forgot. I just saw that. Sometimes when I'm thinking the next thing to say, I'm not thinking what I should be saying at the time. Okay. Actually, I want to make that look a little, a little bit more cuspier. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Make sense? And I'm supposing you do not have the homework again. Page 176. 1, 2, 3, A, C, E, G, and 4, A, C, E, G. So pretty well a theory day.